the uh, <laughs> the whole guide is loose. Harley is like a box of chocolates, especially if it's a salvage Harley. You just never know what you're gonna get. So I bought this bike, and I didn't pay this amount for it, but it was uh, what I thought was a good deal, 30,000 miles. So what started out as a little puff of smoke got a little bit worse every time I ran the bike. It would clear up, and I wouldn't notice it too much, but after 500 miles, one day I was riding with my buddies. He was gagging on the smoke, so we had to stop at the Harley dealer. And these guys all came out, gathering around. Oh, we saw you pull in. It. We were wondering what that was. There was just smoke everywhere under the uh, under the drive-through awning. Yeah, he there was like, eh, he came yeah, out and he's like, like listening. I leave it here. Oh, I've seen these things. You know, I've seen these things blow up right out of the showroom. You know, and so naturally, I was like. I'm not taking a chance and letting them take the bike apart and tell me it's four thousand dollars worth of repairs. I just bought this thing. I can fix it myself. I'm not worried about it. Of course, I have no experience. This was my first Harley, and uh, I haven't really done any major engine work on a motorcycle, but plenty of cars in the past. So I was like, "Yeah, what the heck? How bad can it be?" I got skills. I can handle this job. So, of course, I decided to just hop on the bike and head back home. This was around Halloween, actually. And I figured, well, it's a winter project. I'm going to yeah. have to figure out something with this. So I decided to get on the Google machine and see what all the online experts had to say about this. And the bike only had 30,000 miles on it, so I didn't think it was the rings or anything major inside the motor. But I figured I'd take the valve covers off. And we'll start there. So I picked up a cheap boroscope from Amazon, which has a pretty decent two-way lens on it. And uh, yeah, the rear cylinder was really oily, and the front one looked okay. So next step, tear more apart. Well, I was starting to take the exhaust off in preparation for pulling the head on the rear cylinder here. Mainly my problem is an M seal right there, but I don't know, I don't think I can do it without taking the head off. Rocker box cover, I mean, uh, the rocker shaft bolts here should come up with the, the whole unit here. <laughs> Stick and bolt. Alright. So there's that deal. Man, this really smells. You know there was something not right. Now I'm wondering if that gasket no, there is no gasket, there's just an o-ring there. Okay, these two corners here use a 3 16 Allen bolt. And uh, once you get it sticking up out far enough, you can use a 3 8 I had this uh, ratcheting wrench. So let's take this out now. Yeah, we'll take it out the other side. All right, so there's the gasket underneath. Just fell on the floor, through, but this gasket looks fine. I don't know. Don't see any problems. Shiny. Everything's chrome, chrome, chrome. So now the question is. Can we get those spring retainers off and remove the valve stem seals? And I think, yes, without taking the head off, actually, I think we can. 
we just have to uh, wedge up against the backbone here get them depressed enough to pop the retainers off I'm gonna do both of these for sure because even though the suction is on the intake where probably the oil is gonna to want to go in it's is really because of gravity it's really flowing towards the exhaust valve I would think if anything the exhaust valve even though it's under pressure and there's oil going out the pipe maybe not into the cylinder but definitely out the pipe okay I think I got just the right leverage now probably it's not going to be able to be shown on the camera but there it is alright come on out come on out guys I just tried the old compressed air. Either that valve's not sealing good or what, I had about 80 pounds. I hate to put more than that. If it's going to blow out through the crank or something. Okay, I actually got it. Off camera, one half came right out. The other half, I couldn't get right away, but of course I dropped one of them down. Well, let's see what we got here. Now we can take the springs off. This is really not the way to do anything. But at least I can see if there's any play in the valve. There's the spring. It's pretty obvious which is the bottom, which is the top. Yes. Let's see how much wiggle there is. Oh my gosh. That valve seat is close. I had a feeling when I was... Look at this. I had a feeling when I was taking the compressor on there. It was so much sideways movement. What a joke. Look at, look at the... Uh... <laughs> the whole guide is loose. Oh man, I gotta... I gotta get these heads redone. The whole guide is loose. Well, that would explain something, kids. Look at, there's the spring. Half of the rubber's like gone. Oh, man. Well, we're gonna go all the way now. Gonna send these out to a machine shop. If I knew one that specializes in hogs. Okay, I missed one bolt under there. That's why I couldn't get this thing to come loose. Now I think you can do it. Man, that exhaust is heavy. You take that exhaust off, you probably save about 40 pounds. Okay, taking out the uh, two bolts on each side of the heads for the intake manifold uh, throttle body. This one here was a toughie. It didn't want to break loose, but I did manage, because it's a 316, I managed to use this little dealie with a ratchet wrench. Sorry about the bouncy camera. But I had to use a Allen wrench with another wrench over it to break it loose. The rest of them were pretty straightforward. Just 
just make sure everything's unplugged. And that's all we need to do to get that out of there. Get a look at the intake valve. Oh, that one's pretty clean. Oh, that one, not so clean. Difference. Yeah, okay, just pushing this down. And you should be able to get the cover off. Oh. Now I can push this up and take it out. That's one. Do the same on this one. I assume there's an O-ring up underneath there someplace. Okay, quarter turn at a time. You get this one, then you get number two over here. Number three on this side, and number four to the front on the other side again. Chrome ones where they show, regular ones on this side where they don't show. Uh, you can see how dark the one on the back is for the exhaust. Well, that wasn't even that tight. The gasket didn't really seal much, I guess. Get the light on there. Well, you can see all the crud on there. Hopefully, the uh, the valve seat is okay, but it's hard to tell because it's so dirty right now. It did have a lot of play in it. about damaging it. It's toast anyways. It won't come. It doesn't want to come out. Well, you can actually see how it's mushroomed on the right side. I tried to scrape as much carbon off as I could, but there's an actual ridge on this bottom edge, which is weird. Well, I have this spring compressor which is not ideal but I guess I'll see if I can manage to uh, manage to damage <laughs> manage not all right I don't have the spring compressor but then I was I mean I tried this one but then I realized oh I have a bull joint press why can't I just use that it's got a big hole in the end all you need to do Get it on there. You can see there's room there for the uh, to get the keepers out. I just need a wrench. Make sure this is in the middle of the valve. We don't want to damage anything. Don't want to bend the valve. Yeah, she's coming right out. 
no problem. Just take our magnet, grab the keepers. Okay, so loosen it back up. It's not even that tight. You can take it off by hand here. I get the dirt on everything. Okay, that's that one. Now we got to see what this valve is doing. Oh, that one looks good to me, man. No problem on that one. Gosh, how weird. It just blew up that exhaust valve. So the bike went from looking like this to looking like this. As I waited month after month, making call after call to the shop where I sent the head. So they had a custom make a new valve guide out of uh, silicon bronze. So the head's back from the machine shop, nice and clean. Except for all the metal shavings down in the bottom, I gotta blow that out. So this was so wallered out that it wasn't like a standard uh, size. It was actually custom made by the machine shop. And they supplied me a new plate because this one was cracked. I guess they had to do that because that was part of the installation on the valve guide to make sure this would fit. So uh, I think we're good to go. We got a new made in China Harley valve for the exhaust. Still got the original intake valve, which seems fine. Probably should clean it up a little more on the back side here. But. And they also put a new seat on there to match the angle of the new guide. I guess when you're machining it, it's hard to get it perfect. So they took care of that. So let's put it together. All right, so got the complete top end seal kit even though I'm only doing one cylinder but it's just as cheap to get all the gaskets and stuff I got the breathers I got uh, head gasket exhaust gasket rocker box cover gasket and I got the valve stem seals of course, the originals were blue. I don't know. These don't look that fancy. But what you got to do, basically hammer these on <laughs> without damaging them. They need something to go around the outside. Yeah, that's way off center. I mean, at some point, it's going to straighten out. I would guess. I need to like force it over, obviously, a little bit. This is really stupid. What the heck? Nope. It's not straight. It's not all the way down and it's not straight and it's cutting into the rubber which is also not good yeah that that didn't go very easy and I did put a little bit of damage on the outer edge but it's still okay but the originals are much better I mean look at how thick the rubber is in there and look at how cheesy these are and you could see the metal sleeve is wider on the original ones and there's much more of a rubber which means this will go on right a lot easier i hate to reuse this one but it's actually nicer than the one i bought so i don't know 
This one will probably go on much easier. Yeah, look at that. I mean, you could push it right on. Why does this have to be such a fight? Yeah, oh well. Put this in first because I forgot. I had to pull the uh, valve seal off again. <sighs> oh, right in the eye. Make sure you put that on first. Okay. Then there's, if it's the original valve guide, you have this little ring here. Retainer. That basically goes in that groove there. Okay, now we can put the valve seal on. Actually, if you twist it, it kind of goes on pretty far. And then I will whack it. I shall whack it from here on down. It's going to take more than that, buddy. Almost. And I believe that is that. Can I get in for a close up? Okay, does this ever happen to you? Where, like, you have one, you took it apart. But you only have one. And I couldn't find one valve spring. It was in the other shop. One spring was here. I don't know. I'm losing it. I must be losing it. Then I find one set of keepers. And that's all. <laughs> Why would you like not put both sets together? I don't know. So you know how it's always easier to take things apart than it is to put them back together? <clears throat> well, my uh, ball joint tool thing is not actually working because it's a little off center. So this valve spring, which I gave up on before, compressor I should say, valve spring compressor. I mean it works, but guess what? There's three springs in here. There's this little skinny inner one, then there's the flat wound. And then there's another outer one. <laughs> so, compressing this leaves the middle one behind. So that is of no value. I guess that's why I didn't use it to get the, uh, the spring out in, in the first place. So, I don't know. I don't know where that leaves me now. But that's weird. I can't believe there's so many springs in here. Got a lot of pressure on it. Alright, so this isn't ideal because the throat on here is not quite deep enough to center the opening in my ball joint press here. But I got one end on the valve, one end on the spring. I guess I'm going to put it back together. So we got to get the old gasket off here. See how this works. So it's all cleaned up. I'm going to rotate the piston down a little bit just to clean the uh, if there's any junk got in between the cylinder wall and the edge. Alright, so I got it pretty well cleaned up now, and you can see the crosshatch pattern still. Although there is like Mm, I don't know, these are like heat heat marks where there's something there, something going on, but it still has the honing pattern in it. Yeah, there's some scraping going on in there. Well, 30,000 miles, it isn't going to be perfect anymore. Yeah, that's right. That must be like heat strikes from where the, lines up exactly with where the head studs are heat marks so here's the new gasket I guess the front and back are the same just make sure it says this side up so we put this side up I 
Okay. Time to put the head on. I did say it was a new head, but it's not a new head. <laughs> it's just a remachined exhaust valve seat, a new guide, and a brand new exhaust valve. Okay, so here's the assembled head, all cleaned up. Notice the pitting right by the compression relief valve. That's like in the casting. Boy, I'm not crazy about that. Not dropping on the studs. What's going on? This should be the easy part. Oh, there it goes. All right, so making sure that the threads were clean on these head bolts. Um, put a little oil under the seat and on the threads. And uh, the manual is telling me 10 to 12 foot-pounds and then 15 to 17 well this torque wrench barely even goes that low it starts off at like 10 and you go in a pattern one two three four on the rear cylinder so I don't know that doesn't sound like a lot of torque that's like nothing 10 that is very little Okay, I gotta take the extension off to get the front one. All right, so even though that seems loose, now the thing is, you should put a mark on each one and then turn it a quarter turn to get the final torque. Here's the, uh, the kit for the breathers. It came with the top end gasket kit. So you got the top cover, the lower, you got, um, the little umbrella valve flapper thingy, you just pop it right in the top. It has little keepers in there built in. Make sure it seals. This thing's actually rusted. Brand new out of the package. I don't know what's going on there. Alright, so this goes underneath your little filter pad. That goes in there. And then this goes get any dirt out of there there's not anything really that goes there cover goes right on top and it actually comes with new bolts that have loctite or sealant whatever that happens to be it's already on there bolts and that's basically all there is to that okay so the rocker box gasket goes on the head now the one side says front head and if you flip it over it'll say rear rear head so make sure that one's up rearing its ugly head and we got to put the box on, which I cleaned up. I got to say, Harley has like some really nice chrome plating on their stuff. So we'll put that in. Except my greasy hands are all over it. I better wipe it again. <laughs> I made a mess. Putting the rocker boxes back on. And then this one thread here turned out to be an issue it started to gall and it wouldn't go all the way in apparently there's junk in here and I should have cleaned out and chased all the thread holes before I bolted the head on because now I can get a I can get a tap on there but I can't turn it it would have been so much easier to do this before I hope that's the only hole I blew them out now with compressed air hopefully that takes care of the other ones, but this one's already got some issues now, which is very disfortunate. 
so I managed to chase the threads on that. I just used a wrench, a little tiny wrench on there. Got it cleaned up, blew everything out with compressed air. So there's six bolts. And then you got these two long ones. One goes in that corner, and one goes over in this corner. And they have an Allen head so you can get in there because if you're doing this in the frame, you're going to have a trouble. So I don't know how I'm going to torque that. I can't put a torque wrench on there, obviously, because they're saying about 10 foot pounds of torque on those. All right, so time to put the push rod tubes back in. We're going to put new seals, o rings here, o rings on the top. New o rings going in the bottom. Alright, so we got the push rods in black. That's the exhaust. It comes from the front, it goes to the rear of the rear cylinder. The silver one is your intake. I'm going to squirt a little bit of oil on there. As soon as I clean the dirt off my oil can. Time to put the rocker boxes on. I mean, <laughs> the rocker arms, I mean, rocker assembly. Put a little oil on the top of the valves here. Two far bolts in. Yeah, much better. Except you're gonna get that now, though. We got to tighten these evenly and um, I might have to like push the bike back a little bit to get the piston to top dead center. All right, so I put the whole carburetor assembly or fuel injection assembly in and um, just make sure you route this long wire which runs to the uh, control module on the side here. Make sure you run it under before you put this in place. And um, you got to kind of loosely fit the breather bolts here before you tighten up the carburetor because they all kind of like work together. The uh, carburetor intake manifold, you can see that bolt there. What you need is what do I do with it? You got to rig up something on one of these ratchet wrenches to get in there because otherwise I don't know how you would do it. So this worked really good. It's just a uh, it's just a hex adapter for a socket, and uh, I'm going to loosen this up a little bit so I can get these bolts started here. And then on the other side of the carburetor, you got, I mean the intake, you got a bolt with a slotted ear on the flange on both sides there. So those go on the left side of the bike. Yeah, so I had to back out the manifold bolts because these breather bolts, for some reason, are dead set on cross-threading. I mean, everything is freaking lined up and they just won't go in even as much as two turns, not even one and a half turns. And they just lock right up. That's it. That's it. And then you got to force it. I'm like, how the heck on both sides? This head was never off the bike. So there's no dirt in there. Time to get the thread tap. Try it again. That was a struggle. I literally had to re-tap. I put a little grease on there to retain the shavings, but I literally had to re-tap both of these freaking holes. I don't know what's going on. It's 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 coarse thread. Luckily, it's uh, SAE, so I had the proper size taps, but how that can happen, I don't understand. So now I can go back to uh, 
putting my intake manifold bolts in. All right, time for the exhaust. This was kind of a hard thing to put, to take off, I should say, and then I'm not sure how it's going to be putting it back in, but. Uh, here's another thing I just learned in the aftermath. Put your exhaust pipe gasket in before you put the head back on because it's tight. All right, so we put the little bolt decorator caps on there. I hope they don't fall off because they don't seem to go down as tight as originally. Vent line kind of fished down. I'm not sure exactly where that was before. And uh, you got it. A couple of plugs here go together. This line I had to plug back in. This is another vent, I guess. And of course, the main harness here from the tank that goes back. So, let me get the key and see if this thing will fire up. I want to check for any exhaust leaks before I get too far putting the chrome covers back on. All right, this is the fuel injection fuse right there, which I put that back in now. That's the only one I disconnected because if you if you disconnect uh, the main fuse and all the other stuff, which they tell you, you might get a code, which you'll have to go to the dealer to clear regarding the fuel injection and so forth. So this is going to be loud because we got open exhaust here. Just need to see if it's actually going to start. Oh wait, I got to put it, it's in fifth gear right now. All right, all set here, as far as I know. Stand up. Set the odometer. So after a couple of short trips around the local area, I immediately set out on an 800 mile round trip to West Virginia and back to PA. But fortunately, everything went Since the trip to West Virginia, I've also gone down to North Carolina. That was about 1,600 miles round trip, I believe. And I'm kind of not really liking this bike on the highway. Once you hit 75, 70, anything over that, it kind of shakes a lot. I'm not really sure. The head bearings are good, but it's... I might be looking at a road glide. I don't know what the future holds, but... For now, I'm happy with this bike. If you have any thoughts about how this bike stacks up to the Road Glide? Leave a comment. Thanks for watching.